Okay. So, for this part of the semester, sa latter half ng semester, we will study organic chemistry. No? Organic chemistry is one of the branch ng science, no? isa, siyang, ay, isa siyang branch ng chemistry rather, that is used by applied uh, applied sciences, no? such as medtech. No? So, ano yung applied sciences? Yun yung mga programs, yun yung mga courses na gumagamit ng concepts ng chemistry, tapos siya apply nila sa living things at sa iba pang mga phenomena. No? So, sa medtech, it will be important for you to understand org chem para maintindihan nyo bakit ganito yung reactions ng body natin sa certain chemicals no so ayan so kumbaga your organic chemistry will serve as your prerequisite prior to your biochemistry no so sa biochemistry isa lang siyang version ng org chem with application to life no ano yung effect ng chemicals na to ano yung effect ng organic chemical na to sa tao no pero bago niyo malaman yung effect ng chemicals na yun sa tao kailangan alam muna natin kung ano yung mga chemicals na organic na. No? Okay? Ano pa ba? Ayun lang. So, si lecture na bahala mag-introduction about that org chem stuff na. No? Okay? So, anyway. So, most of the compounds discovered on earth, no? Around 85% of which is organic compounds. No? So, organic compounds yung karamihan ng compounds na alam natin sa mundo, no? Some examples would include complex uh, complex structures. For example, your DNA, organic molecule. Yun, no? So your DNA is your genetic information. No? Uh, for viruses, yung RNA, no? genetic information din nila yun, no? So those molecules are just clumps of organic compounds bonded together. No? So ibig sabihin, with org chem possible, yung transcription ng proteins no possible yung life and possible din yung coronavirus no so ganun what else no? ano pa example ng uh, organic compounds other than dna is of course yung mga skin natin mga lipid bilayers no so, ng mga viruses ng mga cell no so yung mga lipid bilayers ng ating cell ng viruses no sila ay clumps of organic molecules lang na na may certain properties kaya sila nagiging envelope na kaya sila naging spherical in shape no and so on and so forth no yun so yun lang yung idea na and medyo malawak yung organ no so mapapansin natin pwede siyang maging as big as DNA no na pwede makagawa ng life pwede rin naman siyang as simple as methane ano yung methane do so, yun si H4. Yun yung simplest organic molecule. Eh. So, it could be as big as your DNA. Pwede rin naman kasing small like methane. No? So, malawak ang organic chemistry. No? For this part of your semester, we will chop, we will chop, chop your topics. No? Ito chop, chop natin yung topics according to the classification of organic molecules. No? One of the classification of your organic molecule is the hydrocarbons. Okay, so ano yung hydrocarbons? So, hydrocarbons are organic compounds that is only composed of carbon and hydrogen atoms. Kaya nga, hydrocarbon, H and C, lang ang meron. No? So, ito ay isang group ng organic molecules na binubuo lang ng carbon and hydrogen atoms. No? So, may classifications yung ating hydrocarbons. No? We can still further uh, classify our hydrocarbons as the following. Meron tayong alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and arenes. No? So, what's the difference between all this? No? So, kapag alkanes, between the discuss natin today, so ito ay type ng hydrocarbon in which lahat ng bonds ay single bond. No? So, wala kang makikita double bonds or triple bonds. So, the carbon-carbon is single in bond. Carbon-hydrogen is single in bond. Lahat yan naka-single bonds. 
Ang alkenes naman, this is a version of hydrocarbon wherein you will see double bonds. So yung carbon-carbon usually may double bond sila. No? Although hindi lahat ha. Okay, so yan. May part lang ng molecule na may double bond. No? So if you see that, that's alkene. Ang alkynes naman, this is one version of your hydrocarbon in which you will see triple bonds. No? For example, ito, C triple bond C. Now, of course, hindi lahat ng atom naka-triple bond, just a portion of it. Basta may triple bond yon, alkyne agad yon. Pag may double bond, alkene agad yon. Pag walang double bond or triple bond, puro single bond, alkanes yon. Another version of hydrocarbons is itong naka-ring-like structure. Itong mga naka-hexagons. We call them arenes. No? arenes no? So, yan, one example, no? one of the prominent example would be your benzene, aka piatos, sa tawag ng iba. So, kasi hexagon yan. So, ano yung mga arenes natin? These are cyclic organic compounds, meaning nakapa-circle siya. Okay, usually hexagon, in which you will see double bonds in alternating positions. So, anari, may double bond dito, single bond yan, may double bond doon, single bond yan, double bond doon, single bond. Okay, so alternating yung double bonds for arenes. No? We will discover more of these uh, organic compounds, these hydrocarbons, in the future discussions. No? But for now, we will focus on the alkanes. No? Ano meron uli sa alkanes? Your carbon is singly bonded to other atoms. Let's look at one example of an alkane. So, alkane is a hydrocarbon that contains carbon-carbon single bond. No? Okay. So, tignan natin yung alkane. Simplest alkane, molecule methane. No? So, looking at the Lewis structure of methane, malalaman natin na we have four atoms, we have four terminal atoms bonded to your carbon. No. So, ano yung ano nyan? Molecular geometry. So, pwede natin to classify as A, B4. A for the central atom, B4 kasi may apat na terminal atoms. Ano yung geometry niya? So, the geometry ng AB4 is tetrahedron. So, ano ba insura ng tetrahedron? Ito. Okay. So, as you can see, the tetrahedron is a shape kung saan yung iyong atoms ay pointed sa imaginary tetrahedron. So, asan yung imaginary tetrahedron dyan? Ito yun. As meron dun sa likod. So, yan. So, yan. Yan yung imaginary tetrahedron. Apat na triangle. No? So, yan yung imaginary tetrahedron. So, the spaces or yeah, the distances between one atom or one band to the other band is around 109.5 degrees. No? So, yun yung angle of separation of all the bonds for your tetrahedron shape. No? Okay, so yan. So, that means this angle is 109.5. This angle is 109.5. This angle here is 109.5 and this one is also 109.5. No? Okay, so in a tetrahedron, all the atoms are separated, all group of molecule of uh, all group of atoms rather I separated sila with an angle of 109.5. When we are creating alkanes, syempre, ito yung simplest, di ba? However, we can further explain extend this no? by adding more carbon and more hydrogen atoms. No? Pwede natin i-extend yung methane para siya ay maging alkane. Ah, ethane pala. No? Ethane. Okay, so ito yung ethane natin. As you can see, pag nagdagdag ka ng carbon sa ating, uh, uh, sa ating alkanes, what happens is that yung carbon and carbon, they form chains. Nag-change sila. Tuloy-tuloy yung mga carbon-carbon. Okay? However, despite na naka-change sila, their geometries are conserved. No? So, nape-preserve yung geometry nila. So, if you check the shape of this, this is still a tetrahedron. Okay? So, kung, din, kung gusto nyo makita, yan yung tetrahedron. No? Yan. 
Which meron dun sa likod. So, naka-tetrahedron pa rin yan. Same as this carbon atom here. So, naka-tetrahedron yung mga carbon atoms natin na yan. No? If we extend further our, our alkanes by adding more carbon atoms, ang mapapansin natin is that they will be shown as molecules whose chains are in a zigzag fashion. So, naka-zigzag yung mga molecules for alkanes no? because of the tetrahedron geometry. No? So for example, this is, your, uh, this is your alkane with three carbons, alkane with four carbons, alkane with five carbons. So, kumbaga, yung ating carbon chain, they usually form the zigzags. No? Okay? So, one way of representing alkane is by using the zigzags, or we call them the line angle formulas. No? So, in line angle formula, it tells us the structure of the carbon chain. So, pinapakita niya yung carbon chain. Yung hydrogen, hindi niya pinapakita. No? Ito yung actual model ng atom. Ayan yung actual model ng atom, di ba? However, we can represent our alkane as simple as a zigzag. No? So, anong pinapakita sa zigzag? Carbon atoms only. No? So, for example, ilang carbon atoms to? 1, 2, 3. May tatlong carbon atoms tayo dito. So, we represent that as three dots in a zigzag. Ito yung first dot, second dot, third dot. No? May three points yung ating zigzag. No? So, this is carbon, that is carbon, that one is also carbon. Okay? But keep in mind na yung, may car yung mga carbons na yun, may mga corresponding number of hydrogens for that. Mamaya malalaman natin kung paano malalaman yung hydrogens for each carbon. Okay? So, anyway, so let's proceed with this one. Uh, ito, ilang carbon atoms to? 1, 2, 3, 4. So, we represent that as a zigzag with four points. One, two, three, four. Each point sa zigzag ay carbon atoms. So, carbon one, two, three, and four. Extend it further, mas lalo lang lalaki yung zigzag natin. So, this is one, two, three, four, five carbons. So, we have here one, two, three, four, five points in our zigzag. Okay. So, the more carbon atoms you have, the more, uh, I mean, the longer your zigzag will be, no? So, kumbaga, pag may nakita ka yung, ano, ganito-ganito, ayan, ano yan? Carbon, 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 no? Yeah, kung may pamangkin kayo na baby, tapos pag nag-drawing yan ng ganun, no? Baka maging chemist pa yan, no? So, yan, carbon, carbon yung mga meaning yan, no? Okay? At each point in your zigzag ay carbon. Okay? So, ngayon, Ano gagawin natin ngayon? So, let's try it. No? Let's try to check. No? Paano natin mako-convert yung ating actual molecule into a line angle formula? And how can we get the structural formula? I mean, the condensed structural formula. So, ano yung difference between the two? So, sa line angle formula, ang pinapakita lang dito ay yung carbon backbone. Yung chain lang ng carbon. Carbon to, carbon yon, carbon dito. However, hindi pinapakita yung hydrogens. For condensed structural formula, para siyang molecular formula. However, hindi siya compressed. No? Bakit? No? Ano yung difference niya with molecular formula? No? Kasi, dito sa condensed structural formula, it tells you sino yung mga atoms na magkakadugtong. For example, Ito yung molecule natin. So, looking at the leftmost carbon, may tatlong hydrogens dyan. So, CH3. Okay, so CH3 itong part na to. Yung next carbon natin, may dalawang hydrogen atoms. Yung puting bilog, no? So, that's CH2. Yung last na carbon, may tatlong hydrogens yan. So, that's CH3, no? So, kumbaga, kung ito yung, ito yung molecule natin mismo, no? Malalaman mo kung gaano karaming hydrogens yung meron per carbon with the condensed structural formula. No? However, pwede rin natin makuha yung idea ng dami ng hydrogen from our line angle formula no? or the Lewis structure. No? 
So sa ngayon, ang first activity natin is that we are going to convert our line angle formulas into Lewis structures. Then we will try to get its condensed structural formula. Okay. So practice tayo. Paano muna tayo gagawa ng Lewis structure out of our line angle formula and vice versa? So dito na lang. Oh, let's have this zigzag. Okay. Ayan. So this is our hydrocarbon. Hindi yan random zigzag. Hydrocarbon yan. Okay. So the one uh, one way for you to identify its structure, no? gagawa tayo na Lewis structure out of this zigzag. Paano natin gagawin yan? You identify the number of carbon atoms shown in this zigzag. Okay, so ilang carbon atoms meron dito? 1, 2, 3, 4. So we will represent that as 4 carbons connected to one another. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. So ito yung backbone na to. Carbon 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Then what's next? No? Aning, an, aning property ni carbon? We know that in our Lewis structures, carbon can form four bonds. No? Apat na bonds yung pwede nyo gawin because of the four valence electrons. Lahat ay single, di ba? Okay. So since carbon can form four bonds, no? Ibig sabihin nun, this carbon must have four bonds. Ito dapat apat na bonds din. Ito dapat apat din. Ito apat din dapat. No? So dapat tiga apat na bonds yung meron sila. Let's check this carbon. Itong nasa unahan. How many bonds are present na? Ilang bonds na yung meron dyan? Isa pa lang. This carbon is connected to this carbon here sa right side. No? So, isang bond pa lang meron siya. Ilan ba dapat? Apat, di ba? So, that means this carbon on the left side can create three more bonds. No? Pwede pa siya makagawa ng tatlo pang bonds. Next carbon is itong nasa gitna. How many bonds are there already? Meron na tayong dalawang bonds. Dito sa left, doon sa right. So, ilan ba dapat? Diba? Apat dapat, diba? So, may dalawa na. So, pwede pa gumawa yan ng dalawa pang bonds. No? This carbon, ganun din. No? Kasi may dalawa siyang bonds. So, pwede pa yung dalawa pa para maging apat. And lastly, itong carbon na to. So, tatlong bonds pa yung pwede niya gawin para maging apat yung bonds niya. Okay? Then, since ito ay hydrocarbon, na link na natin lahat ng carbons, ano na lang kulang sa ating Lewis structure? E di yung hydro, sa hydrocarbon, yung hydrogen. So, basically, ang gagawin natin dito sa mga bakanting slots for the hydrogens, na, ito mga bakanting lines na yan, doon natin ilalagay yung hydrogens. Na. So, ayan. Hindi nyo na kailangan mag nasurul dito. No? Graduate na kayo ng nasurul. Ganito lang yung Lewis structure sa so organic chemistry. Paulit-ulit lang siya. Okay? So, ganyan. No? So, after drawing your carbon backbone, what's left is alamin mo kung ilan pa yung pwedeng kumabit kay carbon mo. Just, just check kung ilang, ilang bonds na yung meron siya. Then, add sufficient amount of bonds, no? additional bonds, Para maging apat yung possible na bonds, no? Okay? So, this is our uh, Lewis structure for this line angle, line angle formula. Okay? So, itong zigzag na to, ang meaning niya ay ito. Ngayon, paano natin kukunin yung condensed structural formula? So, paano tayo kumukuha ng condensed structural formula? Ganito lang. So, you start from the leftmost carbon. This carbon, sulat mo yan, ilang hydrogens meron sa paligid niya? One, two, three. 
So this carbon is surrounded by three hydrogens. So we will represent that as CH3. Uh, next carbon, ilang hydrogens meron sa paligid niya? One, two. So we represent that as CH2. Ito, ilang hydrogens meron siya sa paligid? Dalawa. Isa, dalawa. So another CH2. And finally, CH3 ulit na. Okay? So, ay yung nagawa natin? From just a random zigzag, nakuha natin yung Lewis structure niya as well as the condensed structural formula. Okay? So, ganun lang gagawin natin. Pwede din natin ito, i-convert natin to into zigzags. No? Pwede din na i-convert into zigzags. Ano lang gagawin mo? Bilangin mo lang yung carbon. 1, 2, 3, 4. Pwede gawa ka ng 4 points na zigzag. No? Tapos ka na. By the way, sa organic chemistry, syempre, hindi mo naman kailangan gawin to parate. No? Kailangan, makip in mind yun na yung sufficient number of hydrogen atoms na pwede for a carbon atom. No? Kailangan from your line angle formula, kailangan may matik na idea ka na kung ano yung dami ng hydrogen for each carbon. Ito yung technique. No? Yung mga dulong carbon, ito, pati yung nasa dulo, usually, tatlong hydrogens meron sila. Bakit? No? Kasi ilang bonds yung meron dito sa carbon na to? Isa. Ito yon, Ito yung isang bond. So that means, pwede pa kumabit yung tatlo pang hydrogen dito. No? If we will show the hydrogen, nakaganito sila. Okay? So ito yung isang bond. No? Ito yon, Yan. So that means, tatlo pa yung pwede nakabitan ng hydrogen. So kapag nasa dulo, tatlong hydrogens. Paano naman to? Okay. Looking at this carbon, how many bonds are there? May isa, dalawa. So that means, ilang pa yung pwede para sa hydrogen? Dalawa na lang, no? Si apat yung maximum. Okay? That means this carbon has two more hydrogens, no? Same as this one. And, of course, yung last, ganun pa rin, no? Okay? So, ganun lang. So, hindi natin pinapakita yung hydrogen sa, ito, drinoco lang para ma-visualize nyo kung gano'ng karaming hydrogens yung pwede, no? By just checking about the number of bonds around the carbon, pwede mo malaman yung dami ng hydrogens. Pag isang bond lang yung meron kay carbon, tatlong hydrogens. Pag dalawa, ay dalawang hydrogens meron. Pag tatlo, isang hydrogen na lang. Tapos pag apat na bond yung meron kay carbon, wala ng hydrogen. No? Okay? So, practice pa tayo. No? So, basically, yung first na gagawin nga natin is to convert line angle formulas to Lewis structure, then condensed structural formula. Okay? So, practice tayo. Anyway, download nyo na lang yung worksheet. No? Upload ko yung answers dyan next week. Pag-practisan natin itong mga zigzag na to. Ito muna. Now, let's look at this zigzag. Ilang carbon atoms meron ka? Bilangin mo yung vertices, yung point sa zigzag. Isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat. Lima. So, you have five carbons, no? Pero, paano natin i-draw yan? Okay. So, ganito. Imagine natin. etong carbon na to, saan niya nakadugtong? Sa ikatlong kat carbon from the left. No? So, one, two, three. So, third carbon from the left, may carbon kang nakadugtong doon. Okay. So, i-draw natin muna itong zigzag na to. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, ipakita natin yung carbon backbone. Okay? So, yan yung carbon backbone natin. Then, on the third carbon from the left, 1, 2, 3, dito, may nakadugtong na isa pang carbon. So, ipapakita mo yon. 
So, CCC, ayan, CCC, tapos may nakadugtong na carbon sa baba, then yung carbon sa gilid. Then, what's next, no? With that backbone, alamin mo kung gano'ng karaming hydrogen ang pwedeng dumugtong. Ilang hydrogen yung pwedeng dumugtong. Okay? So, dito sa carbon na to, how many bonds does it already possess? May isa na siyang bond. So, ilang pa pwede? Tatlo. So, pakita mo yung tatlong bonds with hydrogen. This carbon, the second carbon, ilang bonds na yung meron? Dalawa. One, two. So, ilang pa yung pwede? Dalawa pa. This carbon, the third carbon, ilang bonds na yung meron? 1, 2, 3. So, ilang pa pwede? Isa na lang. Itong last carbon, isang bond meron, so tatlo pa. And that is the same as this one sa baba na. Okay? So, basically, drinaw natin yung skeleton, kung ano yung itsura ng carbon chain na yan. Then, nilagay natin yung correct number of hydrogens no, to fulfill the valency of carbon. No? Yung apat na bonds na kaya niya gawin. No? So, this is our Lewis structure for this molecule, for this zigzag. Okay? So, yan yung kanyang Lewis structure. So, successful tayo. Nagawa natin yung ating Lewis structure. I mean, yung ating line angle formula. Naging Lewis structure na. Next one is, paano natin to i-convert into a condensed structural formula? So, ano meron sa condensed structural formula? CHCH lang, no? Okay, so you start from the leftmost side. Ito, ito. Sundan natin tong line na yan. Ito yung sinusundan nating line na yan. So, sundan natin yan. So, let's start from the leftmost. You have C with three hydrogens. So, that can be written as CH3. Ito na lang. Uh, next carbon, may dalawang hydrogen dyan. So, that will be C. H2. This carbon, ilang hydrogen meron dyan? Isa lang. CH. Then lastly, you have your CH3 again. Paano po itong nasa baba? You can connect that to this carbon. No? Pwede ganyan. Okay. So we can represent this Lewis structure, this line formula, as this condensed formula. No? CH3, CH2, CH, CH3, CH3. So that's one way to represent this molecule. No? I think condensed structural formula. Or, pwede rin naman na ganito. Pwede rin na ganito yan, no? Pwede rin yung ganito. CH3, CH2, CH, parenthesis, CH3, close parenthesis, 2. Ano meaning non? So, ang meaning ng subscript ay may dalawa kang ganito. May dalawa kang CH3. Saan connected yan? Sa previous carbon. Totoo ba yun? Totoo naman. CH3 to, CH3 yan. San sila nakakonect? Sa carbon na ito. Okay? So, you can condense this further. etong dalawang CH3 as this one. Close parent, uh, open parenthesis, CH3, close then 2. Ibig sabihin nun, may dalawa kang CH3 connected to this carbon. Okay? Ayan, ganun lang. So, ganun lang. Ano kaya yung molecular formula niyan? Pag molecular formula ang hinahanap naman, ano ba meron sa molecular formula? Yung total number of atoms lang. Na? So, hindi mo kailangan i-ganyan yan. 
So, kapag kukunin mo yung molecular formula, bilangin mo yung carbon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then, bilangin mo yung hydrogens. 3, 5, 6, 9, 12. No, C5H12. Okay. So, ito yung kanyang molecular formula. C5H12. Ito yung condensed structural formula. CH3, CH2, CH, CH3, then CH3. Or pwedeng ganito. CH3, CH2, CH, parenthesis, CH3, close parenthesis, 2. So, ito at ito, they represent this molecule and this structure. No? Kasi ito yung molecular formula niya, yung total tally ng atoms na meron ka. Okay? So, yan. Let's try this one. Ilang carbons yan? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have 7 points in our uh, zigzag. No? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sa taas, 7 sa baba. No? Okay. So gawin muna natin itong main zigzag. Itong zigzag na ito. So, sundan natin itong zigzag na yan. So, ilang carbons yan? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, we can represent that as 5 carbons na magkakadugtong. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. Then, mapapansin natin, third carbon from the left, 1, 2, 3, may carbon doon. Fourth carbon from the left, may isa pang carbon na nakadugtong doon. Then, what's left? Ano yung natitira na lang? Ilagay mo yung hydrogens. No? So, ilang bonds meron dito sa carbon? Isa. So, ilang hydrogens pwede? Tatlo. Next, sa carbon na to, ilang bonds meron? One, two. So, ibig sabihin, pwede pa yung dalawa. This carbon, ilang bonds na yung meron? 1, 2, 3. So, ibig sabihin, pwede pa yung isa pa. This carbon, may tatlo. So, another one. Then, finally, ito, ito, at ito ay pare-parehas lang may single bond. So, maglalagay ako ng tigta-tatlong hydrogens sa kanilang tatlo. Ayan. So, ito yung kanyang Lewis structure. Next one is yung condensed structural formula. So, sundan natin tong long chain na to. Okay. Ten. So, ilang, ilang hydrogens yan? Tatlo. So, that can be written as CH3. Next carbon, CH2. Next carbon, CH. Then, may nakatusok na CH3 sa baba. Okay. Uh, next carbon dyan, CH na naman. Then may, may nakatusok na CH3 sa taas. Then last one is CH3 again. Uh, pwede pa natin ito i-condense, no? Bakit? Kung mapapansin nyo, we have two CH3s attached to this carbon. May dalawang CH3 ka attached to this carbon. So, ano pwede natin gawin dyan? I-parenthesis, no? So, that can be written as CH3, CH2, CH, CH3, CH, then CH3, 2. Ito, wala na tayong magagawa dyan, no? Kasi hindi siya kasama dito, eh. Okay? So, ganun. So, ano yung ginawa natin dito? Itong dalawang CH3 na to, itong nasa taas, itong nasa baba, they are connected to this carbon, to the same carbon. So, pwede natin yan i-condense further as this one. Close parenthesis, CH3, 2. Ibig sabihin, may dalawang ganito connected to this previous carbon. Okay? So, ganun lang. Ano yung molecular formula niya? Bilangin natin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, that's C7. 
age 16. 3, 5, 6, 7, 10, 13, 16. Okay, so C7, H16 ang kanyang formula. Okay? Uh, more practice pa, no? Marami pa naman tayong examples, no? By the way, kung hindi nyo na-screenshot to, no? Meron naman, upload ko naman to mamaya sa YouTube, no? Ito nyo pwede screenshot ulit pag nakalimutan nyo. Okay, so let's try this one. Write the molecular formula for each alkane. Ito. Sige. So, start tayo dito sa chain na to. Itong nasa horizontal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so may 6 carbon. Nawala. Ayan. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Na. So, may 6 carbons na dyan. Then, on the second carbon from the left, may carbon dun. Pakita natin yan. On the third carbon, may nakadugtong na carbon. Then, sa carbon na yun, may nakadugtong na dalawa pang carbon. Okay, so ganun. Okay, so ano yung idea? Sa third carbon, ito yon, may nakadugtong na carbon. Ito yon. Sa carbon na yon, may nakadugtong pang dalawang carbon. Ito, pati, ayon. Yon, pati, ayon. Okay? So ganun yung idea dito sa structure na to. So after drawing the carbon skeleton, you are left with the hydrogens. No? So hydrogen na lang idudugtong mo. So, dito, ilang hydrogen kaya? May isang bond, so tatlo pa pwede. This carbon here, may tatlong bond, so isa na lang yung pwede. Sa so, taas, may tatlong pwede. And so on and so forth. No? And tinuloy ko na ha. Ayan, may isa pa dyan. Okay, so ganun. So, make sure lang na there are four atoms connected to your carbon. Na. Pero kapag apat na yung bond dyan, wala ka nang ilalagay na, nitro ay, wala ka nang ilalagay na hydrogen. Ha? Pag apat na yung bonds kay carbon. Sobra na yan eh. Dagpas na sa octet rule yan. So, ganyan lang ang kanyang Lewis structure. No? So, ito yung CH3. Drawing, sulat na pala natin yung condensed structural formula. Start ka sa left. No? So, that's CH3. Second carbon may CH. Tapos sa taas nun, meron kang CH3. Third carbon, meron kang CH again. Sa baba nun, meron kang CH, then dalawang CH3. Ah, ano napansin nyo sa sinulat ko? Dito, H3C, doon CH3. Same, same lang yon. Pero this is the proper way of connecting your atoms. No? When you are going to draw the line, no? pag magdodraw ka ng bonds, kailangan... Yung carbon, nakakonect sa carbon. Hindi yan pwede kumonect kay hydrogen. Kasi if yung hydrogen na yan, dun siya kumonect, edi lalagpas sa two electrons yung kay hydrogen. No? So, ibig sabihin nun, mali ito. Bakit? Ano yung ini-imply na ito? This implies that this carbon is bonded to hydrogen. San ba dapat? Kay carbon. So, gagawin mo, pagpalitin mo lang sila ng pwesto. So, ilagay mo muna si carbon, then hydrogen sa dulo. Okay? So, ganun lang. Uh, what else? Dito na tayo. Si H2, si H2, si H3. Okay? So, yan. 
So this is our condensed structural formulas. Uh, condensed structural formula for this molecule. Okay. So ganun lang. It's just a matter of connecting carbon atoms, checking for the proper number of hydrogen atoms in order para maging apat yung bonds kay carbon. So ganun lang ha. So more practice talaga dito. Oh, last one. Ito na lang. Uh, let's try this one. Ah, ilang carbon to? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, may 11 carbons ka dito. So, draw ko muna tong horizontal na to. Ilan to? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, 7. Okay. O 7 carbons na magkakadugtong. 4, 5, 6, 7. So, ito yun. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So, yan yung chain ng carbon na horizontal. Then, saan ito nakadugtong? Itong carbon na to. Bilangin natin. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, sa fourth carbon, may nakadugtong na carbon. Ano pa? Sa carbon na yon, may nakadugtong na naman na tatlong carbon. Carbon, carbon, carbon. So, may tatlo pang nakadugtong na carbon doon. Okay? So, that is our carbon structure. Yan yung carbon backbone natin for this molecule. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then, sa fourth carbon, mayroon kang carbon with... Three other carbons attached to it, no? Sa taas niya. So, this is the carbon backbone. Then, what's next? Nalagay mo na lahat ng carbon, edi hydrogens na lang, no? So, may single bond to. Pwede pa yung lagyan ng tatlong hydrogens. Ito, dalawa. Yan, dalawa din yan. Ito, isa na lang. Kasi may tatlo na siyang bond. So, isa na lang kailangan para maging apat, di ba? This carbon, dalawa. This carbon, dalawa na naman. Ito, tatlo. Okay? How about this carbon? May hydrogen pa ba dyan? Wala na. Bakit wala na? Para kong si Dora, no? Ako rin nasagot ng tanong ko. <laughs> okay. So, wala na, ditong, ano, wala na ditong hydrogen. Bakit? Kasi may apat na na bond, do. One, two, three, four. So, hindi na niya kaya magawa ng isa pang bond with hydrogen. Apat na eh. No? So, maximum na yan. So, dito ka naman sa gilid. O, tig sa single bond yan. Edi, tatlong hydrogens, no? Okay, so ganyan. Mabasa yan. No? <laughs> Draw nyo na lang ulit sa pencil. Ah, sa, <laughs> ano yan, sa notebook nyo. Okay, so ganyan ha. So yan, so tatlong hydrogens dyan, tatlo doon, tatlo doon. Kasi single bond lang yung meron yung carbons. No? Okay, so that's the Lewis structure for this molecule. Ngayon, i-convert natin siya into condensed structural formula. Start tayo dito sa baba. So, that's, ano, dito na lang siguro sa left. That is CH3, CH2, CH2, the CH, tapos CH2, CH2, CH3. Sa fourth carbon, may carbon na may tatlong CH3. Okay, so ganyan. So, CH3, ito yun. CH2, ito yun. CH2, ito yun. CH, ito yun. Pang-apat. CH2, ito yun. Pang-lima. CH2, pang-anim. CH3, pang-pito. Then, sa fourth carbon, you have your carbon with three other CH3s attached to it. No? 
we can further condense this. Pwede pa natin paigsiin yan. No? Bakit? Kasi tingnan nyo, itong CH3s na yan, ilang, meron, ilang CH3 meron tayo? Tatlo. San sila connected? Sa carbon na to. So, we can further condense that. Wala na akong space. Ah, dito na lang. So, we can further condense that as CH3, CH2, CH2, CH, CH2, CH2, CH3. Ika lang. Tapos, dito sa fourth carbon, meron kang carbon with three CH3s na. O, pwede natin ito i-condense itong tatlong CH3 as this one. Carbon, tapos may tatlong CH3. That means itong tatlong CH3, saan sila nakakonekta? Sa previous carbon dito. And one, two, three. So, ganun ha. So, this is our structure for... This is our Lewis structure. Condensed structural formula and another condensed structural formula. Ayan lang. Marami kayong pwede pag-practice-an dito, ha? Ayan. O sige po, questions. Send you lang questions niya. Anong question po? Pag pinagawa po sa amin yung condense, ah, oh, yes, no. Uh, kahit ano naman, okay lang. <laughs> no. oh, kahit ano, okay lang. Pwede ganito. Pwede ganyan, pwede ganito din. No? Same same lang naman yung idea. Okay? Kasi ang mangyayari dito, 'di ba? Multiple choice naman tayo para din, no? You will be given if not this, eto. Pero never na itong dalawa magiging option kasi parehas tama, no? Okay. So, pwede ito yung nakalagay lang sa ano options mo. Pwede ito, no? So, 'yun. Same same pa rin sila ng idea. Ayan, so ayan. Uh, let's try this naman. From your condensed structural formula, we have to write a line angle formula. Okay? So mula dito, gagawa tayo ng lines. Okay, so let's start with this first one. Siyempre, yung nasa straight line na yan, yan yung drawing mo muna. No? Ilang carbons yan? One, two, three... 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, 7. Uh, 7 na points sa zigzag. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Tama ba? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So, yan. So, 7 yan. Urong ko sa baba. Wala. Napapangitan na ako. <laughs> Ito lang. 1, 2, 3. Ganun din. <laughs> Ayan. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Lakayan ko na nga. Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So, saan tayo? Bilang tayo. 1, 2, 3. On the third carbon, may nakadugtong doon na CH2, CH3. So, 1, 2, 3. Oh, yan. Okay lang naman kahit magtaas baba yan. No? Dito na sa taas, pwede mo yun ilagay sa baba. No? So, ayun yung kadugtong dan, CH2, CH3. So, that's CH2, CH3. Kailangan may bend. Kasi pag ginanon mo lang, CH3 lang yon. So, kung gusto mo maging CH2, CH3 yan, baliin mo. CH2, CH3. Okay? So, ganun. Kailang may bend, bend, no? Pwedeng pa ganyan. Pwedeng pa ganito yung bend mo. Pwede ring pa ganun. Kayo bahala. No? Kung ano yung feel nyo maganda sa paningin, sandun nyo. No? Okay? 
So on the third carbon, I have CH2, CH3. So then third carbon, CH2, CH3. May dalawa kang carbon doon. Uh, next carbon, ikaapat, meron kang C. So dito may isa kang C. Tapos ano yung sabi dyan? May dalawa kang CH3. So may dalawang carbon na nakadugtong sa carbon na iyan. So ganyan yung itsura niya. So ito yung CH, ito yon. Highlight natin. Ito yung CH yan. Tapos yung dalawang CH3s, ito yon. Ito yung CH, yan. Tapos yung dalawang CH3, ayun yan. Okay? Ano pa? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, sa pang 6 carbon, may CH3 doon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. O doon. So, may CH3, isang, isang ganun lang yan. Okay, so ito yung itsura ng molecule na ito kapag naka-line angle formula siya. CH3, CH2, CH, CH2, CH3. Ito yun. CH, ito yun. CH, CH3, CH3. Ito yun. Uh, CH2, CH. Tapos may CH3 doon. May another CH3 doon. No? So yan. Practice nyo na lang talaga ito. No? Ano pa? Letter B. Ah, itong horizontal. Yan yung drawing mo muna. Ilang carbon yan? 1, 2, 3. Letter B. 1, 2, 3. Okay. So, yan. 1, 2, 3. Tapos, sa carbon na nasa gitna, may dalawang CH3. No? So, syempre, pangit kapag nakapaganon yan. Pangit eh. So, i-ganon na lang natin. Yan. Parang letter X, no? So, on this carbon, may dalawa pang carbon connected to it. No? CH2, CH3, 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 and dalawa pang CH3. Okay? So, yan. Um, itong letter C. Try natin itong C. Okay. So, ganito. Pag nasa dulo yung parenthesis na CH3, set aside mo muna sila. No. Kasi kagaya nito, nasa dulo yung parenthesis, di ba? So, ano yung ginawa muna natin? Ito muna yung drino natin before this. No? So, lahat ng nasa dulo na parenthesis na may 2, 3, so on. Basta yung CH3 na may parenthesis sa dulo, set aside mo muna. So, ibig sabihin ito, set aside natin to muna. As itong nasa dulo niya, set aside mo muna. Ito drawing mo muna yung nasa gitna. Okay? So, yung parenthesis na nasa dulo, either left or right, sa taas or sa baba, basta may parenthesis, tas nasa dulo siya, set aside mo. I-draw mo muna yung mga nasa gitna. Kunwari ito, CH, CH. O, dalawang carbon. Paano ko i-draw yun? Yan. Carbon, carbon. Tapos na. <laughs> okay. So, yan. So, ito yung CH, ito yung another CH. Uh, Dodraw ko na yung nasa gilid. May dalawang CH3 sa carbon na ito. So, sa carbon na to, may dalawang CH3. CH3, CH3, CH. Okay? Dalawang CH3, then CH. Ganun lang. Uh, punta ka sa next carbon. Maburahin ko na yung binura ko. Ayan. So, sa next carbon mo, may dalawa ka na namang CH3. Okay? So, ganyan yung itsura niya. Para siyang logo ng NIP sa UP. No? Si Feynman gumawa nito. Feynman diagram. <laughs> okay. So, dito papasok yung particle. Doon lalabas yung particles. No? So, anyway. Physics stuff. Okay? So, ganun ha. Pag mga nasa dulo yung parenthesis, set aside. Gawin mo muna yung nasa gitna. Okay? So, gawin natin tong letter F. What if nasa gitna yung parenthesis? Hala, paano yan? Okay. Ano yung isineset aside? Yung nasa dulo. Ibig sabihin, pag nasa gitna, hindi mo siya isaset aside. Okay? Anara, ito, nasa gitna yung parenthesis. So, huwag mo siya iset aside. Yung nasa dulo lang yung hindi papansinin. Okay? 
ano pa yung isang technique doon? Pag CH3 yan, tas may parenthesis doon, iset aside mo yan. Pero kapag CH2 yan, tas may parenthesis, hindi mo yan iseset aside. No? Basta nasa gitna yung CH2 na may parenthesis, huwag iseset aside. Kasama siya sa chain. Bakit lang ginan yan? Ba't kinondense? Kasi siguro, tinamad yung tao isulat yung CH2, CH2 na marami. Ano ba meaning neto? May tatlo kang CH2. So, kumbaga, pag, pag isusulat mo yan, ganito yan. CH3, CH2, 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 CH, tapos CH3, 2. So, ano ginawa niya? Ginawa ng nagsulat niyan, since may tatlo kang CH2 sa gitna, pwede mo yan i-condense. No? Pwede mo yan paigsiin. No? As CH3, CH2 na tatlo, then CH, CH3. Okay? So, tinamad siya isulat yun. Kasi nakakatamad naman talaga, di ba? Pwede naman natin gawin yun. So, pwede mo yun i-condense as this one. Okay? So, pag nasa loob yung parenthesis, nasa gitna ng dalawang carbon chain, kasama yan sa chain mo. Kasama yan sa long chain. Yung hindi lang pinapansin muna ay yung nasa dulo. Okay? So, itong CH2 na may parenthesis, kasama siya sa long chain. Yun, nasa dulo na CH3, kapag may parenthesis, set aside. No. So, i-draw natin yan. So, ano ulit gagawin dito? Ito, set aside. Kasi CH3 yan, tas nasa dulo siya. So, hindi natin papansinin lahat ng parenthesis sa dulo, left or right. No. Itong nasa gitna, kasama yan sa bilang. So, ilang ilang carbons meron tayo sa chain natin? Bilangin natin. Isa, isa to, times 3, dahil sa parenthesis. 1, tapos tatlo, tapos isa pa, ilan yun? 1 plus 3 plus 1, 5, no? So, 5. One, two, three, four, five. So, ito yung CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2. Nakatamad kasi isulat eh, kaya ginanyan na lang nila. CH2, CH2, CH2. Then, sa dulo, may CH ka. Okay? So, gamitin na natin yung tinakpan natin sa dulo. So, sabi doon, sa dulo, may dalawa kang CH3. Ganyan yan. So, ito, CH3 yon. So, ito, another CH3. Okay, so, ganun mag-interpret, no? So, again, paano tayo nag interpret kapag yung CH3 nasa dulo at may parenthesis is set aside? Katulad ng ginawa natin dito, ito yon. Katulad ng ginawa din natin dito. Ayun yon. So, set aside mo sila. Sa dulo mo sila ilagay. Okay? Pero yung parenthesis na CH2 na nasa gitna, kasama yon sa long chain mo. Okay? So, ganun lang. Okay na lang bahala mag-practice dito. Marami naman kayong papapag... Marami kayong pagpapraktisan, no? So, yan. Ayun lang muna, no? So, tapos na tayo mag-draw ng Lewis Structures Condensed Structural Formula at ng line angle formula. Okay? By just looking at your carbon, kailangan alam mo kung ilang hydrogens na meron. Na. Kanari, ito, ilang hydrogens meron dyan? Oh, may, tatlong, may tatlong atoms connected to this carbon. Isa, dalawa, tatlo. So, ilang pa pwede? Isa na lang. So, ibig sabihin, ito ay CH. Ayun yung CH. No? Ayun. So, ganun mag-interpret, ha? So, more practice na. Anyway, balik tayo sa ating PowerPoint. So, we are done drawing the ano, drawing the line angle formula, the condensed structural formula, and the Lewis structures for your alkanes. No? Next one is the constitutional isomers. No? Ano yung isomers? No? Pag sinabi natin isomers, they are different compounds but they have the same formula. They have the same molecular formula. Iisa yung dami ng carbon, iisa din yung dami ng hydrogen. No? 
So same formula, same molecular formula, but they differ in their connectivity. Yun yung meaning ng constitution dito. So hindi siya yung ano, 1986 constitution. Na. Hindi yan. Pag sinabing constitution, connectivity. So whenever we have a constitutional isomer or connectivity isomer, they are compounds with the same formula, the same molecular formula, but they differ in their structural formula or their connectivity. Same molecular formula, different structural formula. Ano ba yung difference ng molecular sa structural? Ang molecular, total number of atoms lang meron. Pag structural formula, yun yung ginagawa natin. Yung CH3, CH2, CH2, something, something. So, pinapakita doon kung saan connected yung mga atoms. So, for example, we have this uh, two possible constitutional isomers for C4H10. One version of C4H10 is itong zigzag na to. One, two, three, four, apat na carbon. Ilang hydrogen? Tatlo to, dalawa, dalawa, tatlo. 3 plus 2, 5 plus 2, 7 plus 3, 10. So, C4H10 yan. Ito yung kanyang structural formula. CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. This is another version of this formula, C4H10. Ano mapapansin natin? CH3 to, CH3 iyon. CH3 yung nasa taas, then yung nasa gitna ay CH. Ito yung kanyang condensed structural formula. CH3, CH, CH3, then yung nasa taas ay CH3. So ito yung CH3, ito yun. Ito yung CH3, ito yung nasa taas. Then you have your CH in the middle. So mapapansin mo, if you count the carbon and the hydrogen atoms, that's the same as this one. However, ano yung pinagkaiba? Yung connections. No? Kumbaga, eto, para makuha mo to, ang ginawa mo lang, itong CH3. Ah, ayaw na ng PowerPoint mag-aaral. <laughs> ano oras na ba? 11 na. Saan na yun? Ayaw na ni PowerPoint. Oopsie. Ayan. So, kumbaga, ang ginawa mo lang para ito maging ganon ay itong CH3 mat, yung CH3 mo na yan, nilipat mo yan sa gitna. No? So, instead na itong CH3 nandyan, ilalagay mo siya doon. So, andun nga siya sa second CH3. No? Okay. So, ganun lang. Yun yung mga uh, constitutional isomers. No? They have the same molecular formula, but they differ in their connectivities. No? One way to check if yan ay isomer is kailangan same yung formula. Kasi kapag magkaiba yung formula, hindi yan. I mean, pag magkaiba yan ng molecular formula, hindi talaga yan magiging isomer. Kunwari, yung chinecheck mo pala, C5H12. Uh, Iba yan sa C4H10. So, hindi talaga same compound yan. Na. Kailangan, same muna sila ng molecular formula. Same muna yan. Then, uh, uh, then after checking kung same yung kanilang formula, tignan mo yung structure. Uh, pag magkaiba sila ng line angle drawing, or magkaiba sila ng ganito, structural formula, then, yun. Isomers sila, constitutional isomers. Saan sila nagkaiba? Sa connection ng CH3. etong CH3 na to connected sa third carbon. etong CH3 na to saan yung connected sa second carbon. So, magkaiba sila ng dinugtungan. So, as a result, constitutional isomers sila. Uh, let's have some more examples now. Do the structural formulas in each set represent the same compound or constitutional isomers? No. So this is CH3, CH2, 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 CH3. Draw natin yan. Draw natin yan. Ah. Ilang carbon yan? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Ang dami. 6. No? 1, 2. Okay. 
Você tem CH3, CH2, 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 CH3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Hexane. No? Mamaya magna-naming tayo. Itong isa naman, draw natin to. CH3, CH2, CH2. Then, sa baba, meron kang CH2, CH2, CH3. CH2, CH2, CH3. Okay? So, ganyan yung itsura niya. Kailangan ayusin ko lang. CH3, CH2, 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 CH3. Okay. Are they isomers or not? They have the same formula daw. So, check natin if they are isomer. Paano uli malalaman kapag isomer? Kapag different yung connectivity. Check mo itong nasa dulo. Ayan. Itong CH2, CH2, CH3. Magkaiba ba sila ng dinugtungan na carbon? Hindi, di ba? Iisa lang yung carbon na dinugtungan nila. Pang anong carbon yan? Sila yung nakadugtong dito sa third carbon. Ito rin, connected yan sa third carbon. So, ibig sabihin, same lang sila ng dinudugtungan. No? So, that means hindi to isomer. Same lang, ayan. No? Bakit? Kasi, itong CH2, CH2, CH3 dito, at yung CH2, CH2, CH3 doon, Iisa lang yung carbon na dinugtungan nila. Yung ikatlong carbon from the left. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So, ibig sabihin nun, hindi sila constitutional isomer. Ano lang yung nangyari dito? Ang nangyari lang dyan is, binali lang yung molecule. Okay? So, kunwari, itong part na to, kunwari, i-flip mo yan dito, i-flip mo yan pababa, baliin mo yan pababa, May yung ganito yan, no? Okay? So, may yung ganito din yan. Pag pinutol mo yan, pag ganun. Okay? So, kung baka kailangan nag-iisip tayo ng... Um, kailangan imaginative yung minds natin dito, no? Kailangan nakikita nyo, ay, pag binali ko to, may yung ganito yung itsura yan, no? One way, kung hindi nyo ma-visualize, is tignan mo na lang kung saan nakakonekta yung group na to at yung group na to sa, at, sa yung chain. So, napansin natin, they are still connected on the same carbon atom. So, they are the same. Same, same lang yan. Okay? So, hindi sila isomers. Same compound lang yan. Ano lang ginawa? Binali lang yung bond. No? So, instead na nakapaganyan, pinu uh, binali lang, pababa na. Okay? So, same, same lang yan. At yung kayo mag-ingat, ha? Baka mamaya isipin nyo isomer agad yan. No? So, tignan nyo yung connectivity. Uh, next one. Itong nasa baba. Uh, draw natin itong chain na to. CH3, CH1, 2, 3, 4. So, apat. On the second carbon, may CH3 ka. On the fourth carbon, meron kang dalawang CH3. Okay? So, ayan. So, ito yung CH3 sa second carbon. Ito yung dalawang CH3 sa fourth carbon. 1, 2, 3, 4. Tapos may dalawang CH3. O, dito tayo sa ikalawa. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 carbons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Tapos, yung CH3 mo, saan ako connect? 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. So, third carbon, may CH3 ka doon. Yun. So, fourth carbon, may CH3 ka doon. Question. Are they isomers or not? They are isomers. Paano sila naging isomer? Tignan nyo. Itong carbon na to, itong CH3 na to, itong dalawa, connected sila sa same atom. Sa fourth atom sila. Sa fourth carbon sila nakadugtong. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, same, same tong dalawa. Saan sila nagkaiba? Sa CH3 na ito. Saan ito nakadugtong? Ito ay nasa second. Samantala, ito naman ay nasa 
third carbon from the left. So, magkaibang connection yon. Iba yung nasa second sa nasa third. So, that means they are isomers. No? So, ganun. Kailangan check mo kung saan sila nagkaiba. So, dito sila sa green nagkaiba. No? Okay. So, ito nasa second, dito nasa third. Okay? So, ganun lang. O, kayo naman mag-practice. No? Uh, I want you to answer... Ayan, ito yung sagot natin. So, letter A, same compound. Yes. Letter B, constitutional isomers. Yes, no, isomers. Okay, oh. Oh, draw nyo muna ito. No? I will give you around 10 minutes. No? Sagutan nyo muna ito. I want you to draw the five constitutional isomers with the formula C6H14. I-zigzag nyo na lang. Zigzag, zigzag. Okay, line angle formula. Okay, so bigyan ko kayo ng 10 minutes no? para i-draw sila tapos papakita ko yung solution ko mamaya. No? So bigyan ko kayo ng 10 minutes para mag-work-work. Work. Okay?
Okay, so sige, I will show the answers na na. Okay, so one of the structure that I can make out of C uh, C6 H14 would be this zigzag. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Anim na carbon yan and ilang hydrogen. Tatlo, dalawa, 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 tatlo. So three, five, seven, nine, eleven, fourteen. Okay. So ganon. Okay. So ano yung gagawin ko ng isomers yan? Out of this molecule, ano gagawin ko? Pagpapalit-palitan ko lang sila ng connectivity. No? Kunwari, itong CH3 na to. Instead of this being connected sa fifth carbon, i-coconnect ko siya sa fourth carbon. Okay. So, nag ko itong CH3 na to. Instead of being connected sa fifth carbon, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Instead na dun siya, ilalagay ko siya dito sa fourth carbon. Okay. Ano pa? Pwede ilagay ko siya sa third carbon. 1, 2, 3. Yan. Pwede ko ba ito ilipat din dito? Is that another isomer? Nare, nandito yan. Nare, andyan. Is that another isomer? Not really. Bakit hindi? Kasi, if you flip this molecule... If you flip it by 180 degrees, pag binaliktad mo yan, you will come up with this structure. Same lang yung itsura niya. So, pinagbaliktad lang yung paper. Pinagbaliktad lang yung molecule by 180 degrees. No? So, nerotate lang siya. So, basically, the two are not isomers. They are the same compound. So, flinip mo lang siya by 180. O, isa lang itsura niyan eh. Binaliktad mo lang. So, hindi yan isomer, ha? So, yan. Uh, ayan. Ano pa pala natin, natin gawin? Mm, ah, ito. Yung dalawang CH3, sa dulo-dulo, instead na nasa dulo sila, ilalagay ko sila sa gitna banda, na. No? Okay. So, yan, ilalagay ko siyang ganyan. Instead na nasa dulo sila, lalagay ko sila dito sa gitna. Yan. So, this is another isomer. Ano pa yung pwede? Itong CH3 na yan, instead na nandyan yan, i-coconnect ako yan dito sa carbon na to. So, I will have this structure. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Ay, sumabara. Teka lang. Ayusin ko. Okay. So, ano ginawa ko dito? Itong CH3 na to, instead na nandito yan, kinonect ako siya dito sa carbon na yan. So, naging tatlo na yung carbon, tatlo na yung CH3 groups ng carbon na to, instead of dalawa. Okay. So, this is one structure. Para siyang paan ng manok na. Okay, so yan. Pag ito, nilagay ko to dito. Nara, ayan, nilagay ko yan doon. Yan. Nara, ito nilagay ko to doon. Is this another isomer? Or same lang yan dito? Same lang yan dyan. No? Ano lang ginawa? Binaliktad lang din by 180 degrees. Okay. Flinip lang ng ganyan. Okay, so same-same lang yan. Okay, so basta uh, pagganahin ang imagination. Uh, hindi porket feeling mo ay iba siya, ay iba siya, no? Uh, minsan, it seems like yun na yun, pero hindi pa pala, no? Same lang pala. Akala mo magkaiba sila, pare-parehas lang pala sila, no? Ayan. So, yun yung ating limang isomers for the formula C6H14. Okay, so ganun lang. Ayan. So, we have the six carbons na naka-chain lang. Then, yung isa nilipat natin dito. Yung isa nandun. Tapos, yung dalawa. Tapos, yung tig isa sila sa dulo. Okay? So, yun yung ating mga constitutional isomers. <coughs> Next. 
<laughs> nasa mid ako. <laughs> Next one. Uh, naming na tayo. So, kailangan yung ating mga molecules, kailangan may pangalan yan. No? Hindi naman pwedeng ito si Gemerlin. Ito si Jepoy Dizon. Ito si, ano, si Dora. No? Hindi pwedeng ganun. Hindi pwedeng kung ano-ano lang yung pangalan natin sa kanila. Rather, kailangan may correct name sila. Okay. Each drawing here, may kanya-kanyang pangalan yan. No? Parang tao lang yan, no? May kanya-kanyang pangalan. No? So, one way of naming our compounds is by using the IUPAC name. Ano yung IUPAC? No? IUPAC is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. So, kumbaga, ito yung Biblia ng chemistry. Ito yung mga sinasamba ng chemistry. No? Andito lahat ng batas about the names, no? about the chemical reactions, lahat ng mga rules sa uh, balat ng earth no? about chemistry, nakalista dyan sa IUPAC systems natin. No? So, isa yung organization na nag uh, ano, na nagpo-formalize ng lahat ng bagay. No? So, binibigyan niya tayo ng correct methods in naming our compounds. No? So, that's the IUPAC. Okay. So, in naming our alkanes, no, yung ating alkanes, may maraming steps tayong kailangang gawin. No? Pero ito yung standard way talaga in naming our uh, alkanes. No? So, number one would be this one. So, kunwari, you have this structure. Okay? The structure mo. May two, ano yan, may two components ang iyong alkanes, no? May two components ang iyong line angle formula. Ano yon? Meron kang parent chain and then you have your substituent. Ano yung parent? Ano yung substituent, no? When you say parent chain, that is the longest chain. Yan yung pinakamahabang carbon chain na magagawa mo. Kunwari, walang number yan. Is this the longest chain? Kunwari, yan. By the way, maganda dito may highlighter, no? Tignan natin kung yan ba yung longest chain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 carbons lang yan. Hanap pa tayo. Is this the longest chain? Ilang carbon yan? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. O, anim lang yan. So, mas mahaba dito kaysa doon. However, tignan natin to. Is this the longest chain? 1, 2, 3, 4. Ay, may number naman. Binilang ko pa. No? 8 carbons yun. No? So, that means this is our parent chain. No? So, ito yung ating parent chain. Yan yung longest carbon chain. So, ito yung magiging... Ano, ito yung magiging baseline natin. Lahat ng nakadugtong na carbon, lahat ng mga connect dito sa ating parent chain, we call them the substituents. No? So, ano yung mga substituents? They are the atoms or group of atoms connected to your parent. Sila yung mga nakakadugtong sa parent. Okay? So, ano gagawin natin? First step, identify the parent and then the substituent. So, yung parent, yun yung longest chain na kaya nyo gawin. Okay? Yung substituent, yun yung mga nakadugtong sa parent. Okay? So, that's the first step in naming... Uh, that's the first step in naming your alkanes na by IUPAC method. Hanapin ang longest chain, yung parent, then identify your substituents. Then, focus ka muna sa parent. Bilangin mo kung ilang carbons meron doon. So, kunare ilang carbons meron dito? Meron kang 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, you have 8 carbons for this longest chain, your parent chain. So, each number of carbon will have to have their own name. So, may kanya-kanyang pangalan yung dami ng carbon. So, we will use this table. This is the prefixes that we use in IUPAC no? to name carbon atoms. No? So, if we have carbon number 1, the prefix to be used is methane. No? So, kaya nga ang pang... Ah, meth pala, sorry. Kaya nga ang pangalan ng simplest organic molecule is methane kasi isang carbon lang yon. So, CH4 lang yon. So, methane yung pangalan niya. If may dalawang carbon yan, ang pangalan niya ay 
ethno plus the suffix in ethane no pag tatlo yung kanyang carbon that will be prop propane pag apat yung carbon butane then starting sa 5 tinamad na sila mag isep ng fancy prefixes yan na lang nila yun sa greek no so pent hex hept octon dec no and so on and so forth and dec do dec tri dec tetra dec uh, penta dec etc etc so tinamad na sila pagkatapos ng 4 no Parang gumagawa ka lang ng essay. Sa una, maganda. Pagdating sa dulo, wala, copy-paste na. No? So, ganun lang din ginawa nila dito. So, yung meth for carbon number one. Eth for carbon number two. Prop for carbon number three. But for carbon number four. And five beyond, just use, just use the Greek prefixes na. Ilang carbon suli meron sa anding, ano parent chain kanina? Di ba, walo? So, that means, ang gagamitin natin prefix ay oct. Then, since yan ay parent chain, lalagyan, na, na, sa, lalagyan yan ng suffix na ain. Octane. Okay? So, ganun. So, yung parent chain natin, meron yung suffix na ain. Indicating na siya ay alkane. Okay? So, alkane kaya ain. No? So, yan. So, oct. Octane. Okay? So, ganun. So, yun yung pag-name ng parent chain. No? Just identify the number of carbon atoms. Then, for each number of carbon atoms, may corresponding name. Kailangan nyo kabisaduhin to. Meth, isa. Eth, dalawa. Prop, tatlo. But, apat. Five, beyond. Just use your Greek prefixes. Okay? So, ganun lang. Second one. So, napangalanan mo na yung iyong parent chain. So, pag napangalanan mo na yan, susunod mong papangalanan ay yung iyong substituent. No? So, in naming our substituent or your alkyl groups, we will still follow the similar prefixes. However, instead of using the suffix ain, we will use the suffix il. Instead na a, ain ang gagamitin, il ang gagamitin. Bakit? Kasi kapag, ano yan, kapag methane, propane, ang pangit pakinggan. Hindi mo alam kung sino yung substituent sa parent, di ba? So, in order to minimize the confusion, para mawala yung confusion natin, yung substituent will bear the suffix il, your parent will have the suffix in. Okay? So, yun yung difference nila. However, yung naming ng iyong alkyl, no? yung prefixes nila, depending on the number of carbon atoms, will still follow the prefixes, no? Okay? So, yun lang. Ano nang difference? Hindi siya ain. Il siya. Okay? May sakit siya. Ayun. <laughs> anyway, so these are our common alkyl groups. These are our common substituents. No? Ayan, so it would be nice if you could remember this. Kailangan kabisaduhin yan. Na tayong choice. Org chem to eh. Kaya nga ayoko dati ng org chem, nagkakabisado kasi. <laughs> Tinanggap ko na lang kasi chemistry pala ako. Na. Ayan, no choice. Okay. So this is your alkyl groups, your substituents, at ito yung kanilang corresponding names. If it's isang carbon lang, yung iyong substituent, you will give it a prefix meth plus the suffix il. No? Meth as in yung ano, alam nyo na yun. <laughs> Breaking bad. No? So yung meth, methyl. Pag dalawang carbon ng iyong substituent, yan ay ethyl. No? Ethyl alcohol. Uh, familiar kayo doon, di ba? Mm, yun. <laughs> propyl. Okay. So, pag propyl, tatlong carbon yung iyong substituent. Propyl. Prop kasi tatlo. Il kasi substituent. However, may isomer yung propyl. Ano yung isomer ng propyl? Itong CH3 Instead na nasa dulo yan, kinonekta niya yan sa first carbon doon. And that resulted to this molecule. Uh, this substituent rather. Okay? So, anong ginawa? Itong substituent na to, kinonek dito. Kaya andun siya. Ang tawag dito ay isopropyl. Meaning non isomer siya ng propyl. Okay? So, yan. So, ni niyang isopropyl. Familiar kayo siguro dito. Isopropyl alcohol. 
Uh, ethyl alcohol. Okay, ayun. Yun yung mga nasa alcohol. Ito nasa, uh, nasa yung, basta yung typical alcohol. <laughs> ethyl alcohol, ito yung nasa alak. No? Okay. Or ethanol. No? So anyway, so share ko lang. Ano yung itsura ng isopropyl? So makikita mo yung isopropyl, for example, ito yung parent mo. Ang itsura niyan ay letter V. Ito yung CH, ayun, CH yun. Then may dalawang CH3. CH3, CH3. So yan yung itsura ng pro, isopropyl. Ano yung itsura ng propyl? Ganito. Ayan, 1, 2, 3. Ito yung parent, tapos yan, 1, 2, 3. Propyl yan. Ethyl, ano yung itsura niyan? Parent. Ayan, 1, 2. Tapos yung methyl, ito yung parent, nakaganon lang siya. Ayan, yan yung methyl mo. Okay? So, ano yung propyl? Tatlong carbon. Ang isopropyl, tatlong carbon din, pero naka-letter V. Pag may nakita kang nakaganon na V. So, yan, isopropyl yan. Uh, next one. Butyl. So, butyl, apat na carbon, the substituent, so butyl yan. Ano yung itsura niyan? Parent. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Ito yung ng butyl substituent. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? Isobutyl. So, ito ay another isomer ng butyl. Ano ginawa dito? Yung CH3 mo, instead na connected siya dito sa previous carbon, kinunek niya sa second carbon from the left. Okay? So, instead na nandito siya sa third carbon na connect, sa second carbon niya dinugtong. Pangalan niya, isobutyl. So, ano itsura niyan? Ganito. Okay, so yan yung itsura ng isobutyl. Okay, so yan. 1, 2, 3. Nasa second carbon yung CH3. Okay, so ganun. Ako, iniisip ko yun as ano eh. Pag nanonood kayo ng Spongebob, yung mga robot-robot doon, para siyang clip ng robot, di ba? So ganun. Yan yung naiisip ko dyan. Okay, so secbutyl naman tayo. So, you have your parent. Ano yung itsura niyan? Nakapaganito siya. Para siyang antena. No? So, yan. One, yan. So, yung CH3, instead na nakakonect sa second carbon, it is then connected to the first carbon ng substituent. No? Dito yung CH3. Ayun. Hindi siya dito. No? So, this is butyl, isobutyl, secbutyl, and lastly, yung favorite ko, third butyl. Bahit ko siya favorite. Ayan, ganyan yung itsura niya. Mukha siyang paan ng manok. Okay, so third butyl yan pag ganun. So this is your carbon with three CH3s. No? Carbon, tatlong CH3. CH3, 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 then carbon. So mukha siyang paan ng manok. No? Ayan, pag napunta uli kayo sa FEU, Pag tumingin kayo ng isaw, ah, hindi isaw, ano yung tawag doon? Adidas, no? Third butyl to, oh. ang ganun. Ayan, so yun lang ha. So, uh, one way for you to memorize this is by using visual cues, no? Yung mga mas madaling maalala, gamitan mo ng mnemo mnemonics, no? Mga imagery, no? So, for example, ito nakikita ko to as paan ng manok. Ito nakikita ko to as letter V, no? So, yan. So, that's one way for you to memorize all your substituents, no? Okay? So, you can either memorize this or just memorize how they look like, no? Okay, so, ganun. So, alam na natin yung pangalan ng ating parent. Alam na rin natin yung pangalan ng substituent. Ano yung difference ng parent sa substituent? Ang parent ay may suffix na aim. Ang substituent ay may suffix na il. YL, okay? Then there are some common names such as isopropyl, isobutyl, secbutyl, and third butyl, okay? So ngayon, kung mapapansin nyo, ito ay octane, ito ay methyl. So methyl octane yan. Pero, itong methyl natin, pwedeng nandito yan sa 2, 
pwedeng nasa 3, pwedeng nasa 4, nasa 5, nasa 6, nasa 7. So, ano yung problema doon? Pag hindi mo siya nilagyan ng address, no, maging ano yan, kung saan-saan yan mapupunta. Kapag methyl octane lang yung pangalan yan, hindi niya alam kung saan yan. No? Hindi mo alam kung saan mo ilalagay yung methyl mo. So, it is important for you to add a locant. Ano yung locant? Yun yung numbers. The locant or the numbers will tell you kung saan ilalagay ang alkyl, uh, yung alkyl group mo, yung, yung substituent. Okay? So, paano tayo mag-assign ng numbers? Ah, dito tayo. So, in assigning numbers, ganito yung gagawin nyo. You number your parent chain left to right, then right to left. No? So, for example, this is my parent chain. This is my longest chain, 1, 2, 3. So, propane yon. This is my substituent, isang carbon yan. So, methyl yon. Ngayon, saan nakadugtong yung methyl? Uh, yan, mag-number ka. Left to right, right to left. Then, check mo. Saan nakadugtong yung methyl mo? Sa carbon number 2. So, since sa carbon number 2 yan nakakonect, both ways, number 2 siya. So, ang pangalan niya ay 2 methyl propane. Ibig sabihin nun, yung methyl mo na connect saan? Sa carbon number 2 ng propane. Oh, by the way, when assembling the complete name of your molecule, yung parent ay nasa dulo parate. No? Substituents first. No? Uh, parang ano lang yan, public service. No? Substituent muna bago ang parents. No? So, yan, so, substituent muna, then your parents. No? And so, 2-methyl propane. O, ganito pala yung pagpangalan. No? Unahin mo yung locant, dash, your substituent, followed by your parent. Walang spaces yan. Yung number and yung letter, pag magkatabi sila, lalagyan mo ng dash. 2-methyl propane. Pwede namang small letter to. No? Uh, ewan ko sa book kinapital letter niya. Pero pwedeng small letter yan. Okay? So, that's 2 dash methyl propane. Okay? Substituent, then parent. Kunwari, ito naman. So, let's try to name this one. So, this is your longest chain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pentane. Pent kasi 5 carbons. Ain kasi parent yung 5 carbons. Ang substituent mo ay ito. This is methyl. Okay? So, ang question, nasaan ang methyl? Okay. Assign your locants. Number the parent chain from left to right, no? And right to left, no? Then, check mo. Ito yung substituent ko. Saan siya nakadugtong? Okay? Pag left to right yung numbering mo, ang kanyang address ay 4. Pag right to left yung numbering mo, ang kanyang address ay 2. Alin ang susundin? Yung lowest. No? Always follow the lowest substituent number or the lowest locant. So instead of naming that 4-methyl pentane, we will instead name it as 2-methyl pentane. Nasaan yung methyl? Second carbon. Okay? Instead of 4. Always the lowest number ang ilalagay. Na. Yun lang. Oh, ito naman. What if you have more than one of the same substituent? Na? Kapag may same substituent ka, then it appears more than once. Na? Kanara ito. This is your parent chain. Uh, you have your parent chain here. Six carbon. So hexane yon. Tapos mamansin mo, may dalawa kang methyl. Ito na yung numbering niyan. Sundin na natin ito. No? So ito yung numbering niya. Uh, 2 and 4. No? Kasi kapag right to left yan, ano may yung combination? Left to right, right to left. No? Pag left to right, 3 and 5 yung number na itong methyl. Pero kapag right to left, 2 and 4. So ano yung lowest? Ito yung 2 and 4. No? 
Okay. So, we will assign 2 and 4 instead of 3 and 5. Ra, no? Okay. So, yung methyl mo, nagsa carbon number 2 and carbon number 4. Pero since you have dalawang methyl, you have to use Greek prefix no? for 2. Ano yung Greek prefix for 2? Di. Okay. So, that tells you na may dalawang methyl ka. Dimethyl. Ang tanong, saan nakalagay yung dimethyl? Saan nakalagay yung dalawang methyl? Sa carbon number 2 and 4. Okay, so the name of this compound would be 2,4-dimethyl hexane. Not 3,5-dimethyl hexane, ha? Bakit? Kasi yung 3 and 5, big number yon as compared to 2 and 4. Again, pwede to small letter. Pwede yan small letter. Bakit di? Dalawa kasi yung methyl. Paano kung tatlo? E di try. Pag-apat, e di tetra. No. So, ganun lang. Ano pa mapapansin nyo? When you have the same substituent, no, kailangan may comma between the with between their locants. No? Kailangan may comma yan. Okay? Kasi kapag nilagay mo 2,4, baka mag-isipin nila 24 yan. No? So, kailangan lagyan mo ng comma. Pag number and number yung magkatabi, two different numbers, you have to place a comma. Then kapag number and letter yung magkatabi, you have to place a dash. No? So that will be 2, 4, dash, dimethylexane. Again, no spaces. Okay? Next rule. If there are more, if there are two or more different substituents, na, uh, kunwari, you have two or more, two different substituents. Mm, seven, six. Okay, so if you have um, two or more different substituents, you have to arrange them alphabetically. Na? Alphabetical yung arrangement ng substituent mo. Okay, so let's have this for example. Mm, ito. So, may methyl and may ethyl. Ethyl, dalawang carbon eh. So, ethyl. Methyl, ethyl. Tapos, ang parent chain ay heptane. So, seven carbons. Tignan natin yung locant ng ating substituents. Ano mamabansin mo? Left to right, right to left, parehas yung number combination. 3 and 5. Ngayon, sino yung bibigyan mo ng lowest number? Pag ganyan yung case, no? kapag parehas yung combination ng number, ibigay mo yung lowest number kanino? Kung sino yung mauuna alphabetically. Okay. Sino ba mauuna alphabetically? Ethyl or methyl? Of course, yung ethyl. No? Kasi A, B, C, D, E. Nasaan yung M? Nasa LMNOP, di ba? So, nasa dulo pa yung banda. So, I will instead give my ethyl a locant 3, then yung methyl ko would be 5. For the reason na yung alphabetical order, yung sinunod ko, kasi parehas lang sila ng locant number. Left to right, right to left, same yung combination. So, kapag ganun, bigyan mo ng lowest number ang mauuna alphabetically. Okay? So, that's 3-ethyl, 5-methyl heptane. Okay? So, in naming your uh, in naming your compound, mauuna pa rin kung sino yung mauuna alphabetically. No? So, ethyl, kasi letter E yan, then followed by methyl. Not 3-methyl, 5-ethyl heptane. Okay? Alphabetical ang basis sa pag-arrange. Now, what if ganito naman? Kunwari, meron tayong prefixes such as di, tri, tetra. Then we have the hyphenated prefixes sec and tert. Do we have to include them sa alphabetization? Sa pag-alphabetize? No. So whenever we have prefixes na Greek such as di, tri, tetra, penta, wag mo, isa, wag mo sila isasama sa pag-alphabetize. Ano yung kailangan mo? Yung meth, yung eth, yung prop. No? So, sila-sila yung i-arrange mo alphabetically. Hindi yung di, tri, tetra. And also, 
if you have a hyphenated prefix na sec and tert, especially for butyl, yung sec butyl and tert butyl, hindi mo ibebase yung arrangement sa kung sino yung sec, sino yung tert, no? So, hindi mo sila isasama. Bakit? Hindi kasi dapat sila kasama. Yung butyl yung papansin ninyo. Not the sec, hindi rin yung tert, okay? So, yung butyl yung papansin ninyo natin. So, for example, we have this one. We have two methyl, so may in dimethyl yan and ethyl. So, ang proper naming yan would be 4-ethyl-2-2-dimethyl-hexane. No. Okay, bakit na yung ethyl kaysa sa methyl? Okay, kasi letter E yan. Pangalawa, hindi natin papansinin yung D, yung di. No? Kasi kapag pinansin nyo yung di, ano yung uunahin nyo? A, B, C, D. Baka unahin nyo, 2 kama 2 dimethyl, no? Baka ganito yung gawin nyo. Kasi sabi nyo, uy, nauna po yung letter D kaysa sa E. Hindi, no? Hindi mo papansinin yan. Yung methyl yung papansinin mo. Okay? So, ganun lang. Yun lang. So, I think, yun na yun. <laughs> okay? So, yun na yung ating mga rules, no? Uh, they are posted here naman sa PowerPoint. And ngayon, magpa-practice na tayo. Uh, medyo malapit na tayo matapos, don't worry. Siguro mga one. <laughs> Mahaba talaga lesson natin eh. Ganun talaga. Alam, brain ko lang to ha. Uh, Pagpa-practice tayo ng naming. Oops, ala, nabura. Bayan. Ano yun? <laughs> Nabrain ko lang itong mga ito. Hanggang dito nagbubura ng board eh, na. Okay. So, yan. So, magnaming tayo ha. We have lots of stuff to name naman. So, that's good. Okay. So, let's start with this one. Yan. Ah, ang pangalan niya. Oh, hindi mo siya pwede pangalanan Pedro. Hindi pwede kasi may proper way of naming them. How do we name compounds again? So, in naming compounds, number one, identify the parent and the substituent. Alapin mo yung longest chain. Ayan yung longest chain. No? Pwede rin naman yung nandito sa baba. No? Si 4 carbons pa rin yan. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So this will be my parent chain. Ano pangalan ng magulang niya? Siya si apat na carbon, but. Tapos ano yung suffix kapag parent? Ayan. Butane. Okay, so pangalan niya, butane. After naming your parent, pangalanan mo ang substituent. Yung nakadugtong sa parent. So, ito yung akin substituent, yan ay isang carbon. Ano pangalan nun? Methyl. Methyl. Bakit meth? Kasi isang carbon. Il kasi substituent. Methyl. Anong kulang? Number. Yung low count, no? Focus tayo dito. Number rin natin. Left to right. Then, right to left. Okay. So, yan. Number rin natin. Left to right. Right to left. Focus kay substituent. Anong lowest number? 3 or 2? And of course, yung... Two, no? So, that means my locant for my substituent will be 2. So, ang pangalan niya ay 2-methyl-butane. Okay. So, ayan yung pangalan niya. Pwede nyo i-screenshot yan. No? So, ganun yung pag-name. No? So, identify your parent chain, the longest chain. It will have a suffix ain. Identify your substituent. It will have a suffix il. Then, 
assign a locant. Lagay mo yung number. Left to right, right to left. Give it, uh, give the lowest number. Okay, so ganun. So that's 2-methylbutane. Now next one. Identify the longest chain. Sige. Is this the longest chain? One, two, three, four. Oh, and that four lang yan. Is this the longest chain? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yan yung longest, no? Five, eh. Kaising ko lang yung highlight. So, five carbon yan. So, this will be my parent, no? Ano yung prefix kapag five? Pent. Then, since yan ay parent, ang suffix niya ay ain. Pentane. Next one, substituent. Substituent. Ano yung mga, ano yung mga nakadugtong sa parent? I have a methyl, another methyl. So, ano yung met, ilang methyl meron ako? Dalawa. So, I will call it dimethyl. Okay? Dimethyl. Dalawa kasi yung methyl ko. Anong kulang? Locant number. Okay. So, mapapansin nyo, my possible numbers are 3 and 4 tapos 3 and 2. Ano yung lowest? And of course, yung naka-green. 3 and 2 yung aking susundan, no? So, yun yung lowest number, eh. So, that will be 2, comma, 3, dash, dimethyl. Okay? So, ganun ang gagawin niya. So, 2, comma, 3, 2, and 3, dash, dimethyl. Pag dalawang numbers magkatabi, may comma. Pag number and letter ang magkatabi, may dash. Okay? So, anong complete name niya? 2, comma, 3, dimethyl pentane. So, yan yung complete name niya. 2, comma, 3, dimethyl pentane. A screenshot nyo yan. Pwede naman. Next one. Ito, mukhang challenging. Itong molecule na to. Identify the longest chain. Is this the longest chain? Bilangin natin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbons lang yun. Mm -hmm. Is this my longest chain? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, 7 to. Mas mahaba to, no? So, that will be my parent chain. 6 yung kanina. Ito, 7. So, ano yung prefix kapag 6? Hept. And then suffix ay ain. Heptane. Kasi parent, kaya ain. No? Next one, substituents. Oh, with S na, ang dami na eh. Ano yung mga substituent ko? Mm -hmm. Meron ako nyan. Meron ako nyan. So, itong, ito, ano pangalan nyan? Isang carbon lang yan, so that will be methyl. Itong dalawang carbon na to, ang name na to ay, ano yung magiging name niya? Ethyl. So, ethyl yan. So, I have methyl, ethyl, then, and to. Ano to? Letter V. Ano yung letter V? Isopropyl. Okay. So, kaya maganda yung may, ano ka, may visual cue ka, no? Para may shortcuts ka. O, pag nakalimutan, balik dito sa PowerPoint natin, hanapin ang isopropyl. Ayan. Oops. Ayan. CH, then CH3, CH3. Naka-letter V yan, no? 
So, yan. So, pag may nakita kang letter V na substituent, isopropyl. Yan. Okay? What's next? Ano susunod? Locants. No? Numbers. Left to right. Then, right to left. Sulat ko yung numbers nila pag yung red yung gagamitin ko. So, this will be 3. This will be 4. 6. Ito ay 5. 4. Then, 2. Oh, which is better? Anong combination yung better? Yung red or yung green? Siyempre yung green. Bakit hindi pwede yung red? Kasi malaki yung number. 3 yung lowest number dito eh. Samantala kapag green, 2 yung lowest number. So we will use the green one. No? So bakit? Kasi yun yung may lowest combination ng number. Always yung lowest number yung gusto natin kunin. Okay. So then, okay. So I have many substituents. Paano ko sila i-arrange? Alphabetically. Uh, sino yung una sa, ano, sa substituents? Oh, uh, A, B, C, D tayo. A, B, C, D, E. So, una to. So, siya yung una. E, F, G, H, I. So, pangalawa yan. Then, ikatlo yan. Okay? Bakit kasama, sir, yung I? So, kasama talaga yan. Ano yung hindi kasama? Ano yung hindi sinasama sa prefix? Yung di yung try, yung tetra, so on and so forth. Tapos yung sec and then yung but. Yung iso, okay yan. Okay? Kasama yan sa ano counting, sa alphabetization. Okay? So yan, so ibig sabihin unahin natin yung ethyl. So that will be 5 dash ethyl. Ano sunod? Yung isopropyl dash 4 dash isopropyl dash na naman to kalimutan ko yung dash 2 dash methyl then finally heptane haba ng pangalan so hindi siya uh, ganyan yung pangalan niya no? oops ano ba yan? Okay, so that will be the name of our compound. No? Oops. Yeah. So, yan yung name ng ating compound. So, that's 5-ethyl, 4-isopropyl, 2-methyl, heptane. So, yan, you can take a screenshot. No? Okay. Last one. Marami pang pwede sagutan dito ha. Pero iwan ko na yung iba sa inyo. Ito. Sagutan natin ito. Pangalan na natin siya. So let's identify the longest chain. Is this the longest chain? Bilangin natin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons. Is this the longest chain? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, ito yung longest chain. 6 eh. Okay? So, parent. 6 yan. So, yan ay hex. No? Then, the suffix ain. Kasi parent yan. Substituents. Ah, may dalawa tayong substituent. Mm. Yun ay, ano? Methyl. Then, yung nasa baba ay, o letter V yan, isopropyl. Okay? Ganun lang, ha? Kailangan nakikita nyo na yung mga shortcuts. Numbering. O, obviously, hindi na ako magra-right to left. Ang layo, eh. Pag right to left yan, 1, 2, 3, 4. Pang-apat pa, no? Pag left to right yan, 1, 2. Okay, so I will choose the left to right na. 2-methyl, 3-isopropyl, hexane. 
Oh, alphabetize natin. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. So, uning I. 3, isopropyl, dash 2, methyl, hexane. So, this will be the name of our compound. Ah, ganun lang, na? So, that's how you name your compound, na? Siguro last one. <laughs> Ayan, sige, screenshot. Ay, teka lang. Lagyan natin ng number para makita niya. Okay. So, yan. Screenshot. Okay. So, next one. Okay, next one naman. Ibahin natin. From the name itself, uh, mula sa name, Uh, mula sa name, gagawa tayo ng structure. Is isa lang sasagutan ko. Kaya nabahala sa iba. Practice din nyo. Okay? So, na itong letter A. 2,2,4 trimethylhexane. Wala pa na yan. No? Okay. So, yung hexane, itong nasa dulo, that is your parent. Yun yung i-drawing mo muna. Okay? Hexane. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Let's my parent, hexane. Tapos, mag-assign ka ng number. Lakihan ko lang. Oops, sobrang laki na. Okay. Ay, asan na? Eto. Okay. Ay, pangit pala. Ano ba yan? Tama ba? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So, yan. So, idodraw mo muna yung parent chain. Hexane yung nasa dulo. So, ibig sabihin, 6 carbon yung parent chain mo. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Tapos ngayon, ilalagay mo na yung substituent mo. Okay. So, paglalagay ng substituent, any, any. Kahit saan ka mag-start ng number. Pwede right to left, pwede left to right. Pero usually, left to right yung counting. No? This one, this is two, two, three, four, five, and 6. Anilitan ko lang yung ano, numbering. So, saan may substituent? 2,2. May methyl doon. So, ayan. Pakita mo. Yan yung dalawang methyl sa carbon 2. Carbon, carbon, nasa carbon 2. Yan yung 2,2 methyl. Uh, yung isang methyl nasa, nasa 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Nalagay mo doon yung isang methyl. So, ito yung 2,2,3 trimethyl, kasi tatlo yan, hexane. Kasi yung parent chain mo ay 6 carbons. O, isa na lang. Mamaya, nasagutan ko na itong lahat din. 2,2-dimethylpropane. Eh, no? What is my parent? Propane. Ilang carbons yun? Tatlo. So, yan. 1, 2, 3. This numbering usually left to right. Okay, bahala. Litan nyo na lang yung number nyo. Okay? So, this is 1, 2, 3. Asan yung dalawang methyl? 2 and 2. Thank you. Naka-letter X na. So, 2,2 dimethyl propane. Okay? So, ganun lang. Uh, ba't kaya may bad network quality? Anyway, so ano lang, it's just a matter of ano na lang. Um, yung naming rule, kailangan kabisado nyo yung naming rules, no? So, practice na lang kayo, no? So, you have lots of stuff to practice with, no? So, yan. So, sagot-sagutan nyo na lang, okay? So, yan. Yung rules naman nasa PowerPoint na. And before I end my class, no? Saktong one end ko na to. Okay. So, puntahan muna natin yung sources ng alkanes. San ba natin nakukuha yung alkanes? No? So, we have two primary sources for our alkanes. No? Number one is the natural gas. The second one is the petroleum. Ano yung difference? No? Yung natural gas, that is a natural byproduct of the decomposition of your organic matter. Saan nakikita yan? Sa septic tank. Sa 
ano, sa mga tae ng kalabaw, no, sa basurahan. May mga methane doon. No. So yung nangyayari kasi doon is that your bacteria will eat the organic matter in your let's say feces, no. Ay sorry kung may kumakain na. Pero yun ganun yung kwento noon. No, kunare, nasa septic tank or nasa manure sa farm, no. So yun, yung mga organic matter doon, bini-breakdown yun ng bacteria. Ganun din sa basurahan, no. Uh, one example would be the payatas, no. Sa payatas, yung bundok ng basura na yun, nakakuha sila ng natural gas. Ginagamit nila as kuryente, as panluto din. Diba? Familiar kayo siguro doon kasi binabalita yun sa TV dati. No? So, yun. so yung bacteria, kakainin niya yung organic matter na meron sa yung feces, sa yung decaying matter, no? sa mga nabubulok na bagay sa basurahan. Then ilalabas niya yung methane. Okay, so most of the natural gas have methane, no? 90 to 95%, and some of which ay yung longer chain ng alkanes, such as ethane, and propane, butane, and isobutane. No? So, yun. so primarily, methane is produced by decomposition of matter. No? Uh, sa septic tank, uh, I don't know if familiar kayo, pero I was a child that time. Grade, uh, grade 4 ako nun eh. 2007, grade 4 ako nun. Uh, nasa hospital ako nun kasi nagpapabunot ako ng ipin. So, if familiar kayo sa Glorieta Blast, no? 2004 yon Gulat kasi ako habang binubunutan ako ng ipin, nakikita ko sa TV, may sumabog daw sa Glorieta. Kala ko may, ano eh, kala ko may gulo na naman sa Pilipinas. Yung pala, yung septic tank sumabog <laughs> because of the methane. No? So, yun. Yung methane kasi this is an organic compound that is highly combustible. Sasabog yan. Kaya yung iyong septic tank sa bahay, mapapansin nyo, may tube yan pataas. So, yung purpose ng tube is para yung methane, hindi sila makulob sa loob ng septic tank para mag-escape sila sa atmosphere para hindi sila sumabog. Yung nangyari daw kasi sa Glorieta is ganun nga, nakulob yung methane. So, sumabog yung, ano, sumabog yung septic tank. Imagine nyo lang kung gano'ng kabaho dun. No? Okay. So, yun lang. Another source of your alkane would be your petroleum. No? Ito yung mga nasa oil rig. No? Pag sinabi natin oil rig, hindi yun yung oxidation is losing. Reduction is gaining. Yung literal na oil rig. No? Yung nasa dagat. For example, yung malampaya, yung mga nasa Gulf of Mexico, yung mga oil rigs doon. So, ginagawa doon, pinupull out nila yung mga organic compounds from the surface, uh, beneath the surface of the ocean. No? So, saan galing yung mga organic compounds na yon Sa mga namatay na dinosaurs, no? mga namatay na marine animals and plants, no? etc., etc., so, yun. So, kinukuha nila yung oil na yun. Then, sineseparate nila yung mga hydrocarbons doon using the concept of the fractional distillation. Anong intermolecular force meron ang ating alkanes? Biglang ganun, no? Ang carbon-hydrogen bond ay nonpolar. Ang carbon-carbon bond ay nonpolar. So, ibig sabihin, it is only capable of doing London Dispersion Forces. Important yun. Ano yung concept ng London Dispersion Forces? Ang concept is that the more atoms you have, the more electrons you have, the more interactions they will have. No? Ibig sabihin, mas malakas yung intermolecular force kapag mas maraming atoms. No? Yung ating alkanes, dumadami yung atoms niyan. No? Merong onting atoms such as methane, isang carbon atom lang yun. Tapos, we have several versions of alkanes, diba? such as octane, yun na sa gasolina, walong carbons yun. Then, yung mga waxes, yung mga nasa kandila, mga carbon greater than 20 na yun, na? or around 20. So, ang idea dito is that from your petroleum, yung crudo, galing sa ilalim ng lupa, sa dagat, pinapakuluan sila. So, depending on the strength of the intermolecular force, magbo-boil off yung compounds. No? So, sino yung unang kukulo? No? Sino yung unang mag-escape sa petroleum? 
the first one to boil off is yung carbons from carbon 1 to carbon 4. Your methane up to butane. So sila yung unang mag-evaporate pag pinainitan mo yung petroleum. Bakit? Kasi mababa lang yung intermolecular force nila. Konti lang yung atoms eh. However, the more atoms you have, no, habang dumadami yung atoms mo, mas lalong tumataas yung boiling point. For example, naubos na lahat ng ano, uh, methane to butane. Ang susunod na magbo-boil off ay yung mga gasoline. Ito yung mga ginagamit sa sasakyan. So that's from carbon 5 to carbon 12. So kasama dyan yung octane. Kung papagasolina na kayo, di ba nakalagay doon, high octane, no? So, yun. Octane na yun. Yun yung organic molecule na uh, nadidiscuss natin ngayon, no? So, yun. So, susunod na magbo-boil off yung mga gasolina na ginagamit sa sasakyan, no? Next one is the kerosene. So, yung kerosene, longer chain ng carbon yun. Around carbon 12 to carbon 16. So, saan ginagamit yung kerosene? Sa lampara, sa oil lamp. Meron din naman yun sa diesel, no? Yung mga ano natin, ano ba yung mga diesel na sasakyan? L300, no? Yung mga dump truck, no? So, yan. Medyo maraming energy na yung kailangan doon. Kaya kailangan kerosene gamitin doon instead of gasoline. Okay? So, yan. Yung mga pick-up, yan. Kerosene yan. And then, after nyan, kunwari na boil off na yan, susunod ay yung mga carbons 15 to 18. Okay, so mga malalakas na yung intermolecular force na mga yan. So dito naman yung mga fuel oil, no? So dito yung mga diesel fuel, mga ano, pang change oil, no? So dyan may makukuha. Then after that, pag kumulo na yung up to carbon 18, no? carbon 16 to 20 na naman yung kukulo. So ito naman yung mga lubricants, no? Such as yung mga, ano yun, tawag doon? Petroleum jelly, ayan. So, hydrocarbon lang yun. Napa-example ng mga lubricant, petroleum jelly. Ayun. Sa mga sasakyan, yung mga pang-change oil din, no? So, mga lubricating oil din yan. Then, lastly, yung pinakahuling matitira dito is yung carbon, yung hydrocarbon mo na greater than 20 na yung carbon atoms, no? Yun yung mga asphalt, no? Kaya pag may nag-aayos ng kalsada, yung kulay ila, yung kulay itim na yon, hydrocarbon yon, Okay? So, yung asphalto is hydrocarbons, no? Okay? So, sila yung black residue after the uh, fractional distillation of your petroleum, okay? So, next meeting, uh, tapos na tayo, eh? Next meeting, we will continue with cycloalkanes, no? the different common uh, i mean the common cycloalkanes that we have their isomerisms then the physical and the chemical properties of alkanes then tapos na tayo for the first part na so yun yung discuss natin by next week tuesday and by friday next week alkenes and alkynes naman no so make sure to study in advance na lang no so punta lang kayo ng canvas Punta kayo ng canvas. Dito sa discussions, na-post ko na yung PDFs natin. No? Ayan. So, itong dalawang PowerPoint yung ginagamit ko. Chapter 11, Chapter 12, yung worksheet na sa GC natin. Download yun na, pag-practice nyo na. Isa-send ko next week yung sagot na. So, ayan. So, we're done. So, kalauna na. Sakto. So, Tapos na yung class natin, so I'll see you on Tuesday na lang ulit. So, bye-bye and stay safe. Download nyo yung worksheet, tas aralin nyo ha. Bye-bye.